Alexander Zarif recently underwent surgery after sustaining this horrific looking ankle injury at the French Open, and in this video we're going to talk all about these latest updates. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and Alexander Zarif recently shared this update on his Instagram earlier today, talking about the full extent of his ankle injury. Specifically, he mentions that after further examination, confirmation that all three of the lateral ligaments of the right ankle were torn. To return to competition as quickly as possible, essentially, surgery was his best choice. The description of lateral ankle ligaments means the ligaments on the outside of his ankle. So lateral is outside, medial is inside. So here on his right ankle, of course, this was the injury event, we can see how that ankle rolled into severe inversion. When the outside of the ankle comes down to the ground like that, it's going to stretch all those ligaments on the lateral or outside of the ankle. And so the mechanism of his injury fit very clearly with the resulting damage that we ultimately learned about in his post. Even when you have inversion, you can see other areas of pathology and injury. Specifically, sometimes there's contusions on the medial malleolus or this inside bump of the ankle just from the direct blow with that compression that you can see here. You can injure the perineal tendons on the outside of the ankle and certainly cause things like cartilage damage or fractures in the ankle. But from his post, it fits with the mechanism that we see with the footage here, lateral ankle sprain inversion injury, injuring those lateral ligaments. Now let's talk about what exactly those three ligaments are. And if we look at our biodigital anatomy tool here, I'm showing the outside, we're getting the lateral portion of a right ankle. So the small toe here, that's going to be the outer portion, lateral. If we look at the lateral ankle, of course the bone that we see there on the outside is the distal fibula. The fibula is the long bone in the leg that sits on the outside. It doesn't really bear any weight and it's that hard bump that you can feel on the outside of your ankle. Off of the fibula are going to originate the three lateral ligaments. The one that sits here in the front is called the ATFL. It's one that's most commonly injured in these types of injuries, and even when it's completely torn, we still typically don't have to do surgery for it. We check the stability of this ligament by basically supporting the back of the heel and then essentially pulling the foot forward to try and pull along the plane of that ligament to see if it's loose, to see if it's lax, suggesting a full tear. And of course you can have tenderness just palpating in this area. As we sort of work our way around the clock face, the next most commonly injured one is the CFL, or the calcaneal fibrillar ligament. Again, these ligaments are all named after the two bones that they connect. So CFL, calcaneus, to the fibula ligament. Here, we test this ligament by doing something called a Taylor tilt. Again, this ligament is running from north to south, up and down. So to stress it, we actually reproduce that inversion type of motion. We try to pull that ligament to see if there's increased laxity, particularly compared to the other side. Now, the third one in this whole area, the PTFL, or the posterior talofibular ligament, again, same sort of naming convention, honestly is very rarely injured. And it's something that we don't even have a specific clinical test for because it's so darn rare to see an injury to this ligament. And when we get to injuries in this ligament, that really shows just how severe and traumatic this whole sequence was and how much energy was there in the lateral part of his ankle leading to that occurrence. The actual high ankle sprain ligaments are further up here, still originating off the fibula, but now running over to the shin bone. And basically from the description of Zarif's post, you know, the three lateral ligaments would be these three down here that we just talked about. For your average run of the mill ankle sprain, you don't need to do surgery right away. Where this gets to be different is when you have the presence of a fracture. So if we look again, all of these ligaments originate off the bone. And so sometimes you can have an avulsion where instead of the ligament tearing, the ligament actually pulls a chunk of the bone away, causing a fracture. That's a situation where it's going to be harder to heal this conservatively. But for just your run-of-the-mill sports injury, ankle sprain, we typically don't do surgery right away. And so the fact that Zarif ultimately had surgery means a couple of things. Number one, there could have just been such profound instability of his ankle with all of these ligaments damaged that there really wasn't any other option than to do some sort of reconstruction to basically give him back this reinforcement. It's also possible there were other injuries here he just doesn't have in his post, specifically something like an avulsion fracture, injury to some of the tendons wrapping around the ankle, or even potentially some cartilage injury within the joint. And then of course, there's always the consideration of somebody being a professional athlete and the return to play time. That definitely influences your treatment decisions because you have all these other factors at play beyond just what you and I might have if we just sprain our ankle and are sort of going about our daily life. Now that's not going to drastically influence one indication over another, but it plays into these decisions and I'm sure influenced his decision in terms of what to do here initially. This was without a doubt a very significant injury and I appreciate Zarif sharing the update to give us a little more insight into these specific areas because we can see those anatomical terms 
we can get a better sense of how the mechanism fits with the actual injury and just learn more from this whole experience. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.